In my optimization course, I am sometimes asked to give the constraint inequalities for a word problem situation. Or I can be asked to give the optimization function for the same word problem situation. I can be asked to define the variables for the situation. These are all steps in doing an overall optimization problem from beginning to end. The constraint inequalities tend to be all of the numbers in the situation except the numbers that have to do with money. And the numbers that have to do with money tend to be what you use in your optimization function. Before you can make either type of equation though, you have to define your x and your y variables. In this case, I have at least 25 tomato plants in my garden, at least 15 lettuce plants, and no more than 20 lettuce plants. I pay $2 for each tomato plant and $3 for each lettuce plant. Let x equal the number of tomato plants. And therefore y will be equal to the number of lettuce plants. Now we can go ahead and make our equations. The optimization function is the money statement. We have $2 for each tomato plant, therefore $2 for each x. And $3 for each lettuce plant, that's $3 for each y. We are going to have 2x plus 3y equals our optimization symbol. The constraint inequalities are all of the other numbers. At least 25 tomato plants, since tomato plants are expressed in x, will give us the equation x greater than or equal to 25. At least 15 lettuce plants will therefore be y greater than or equal to 15. And no more than 20 lettuce plants will be y less than or equal to 20. This is a pretty simple situation, but it helps to illustrate what you have to do in order to create an optimization function and create your constraint inequalities it also illustrates the difference between giving the constraints and the optimization function and giving the elements of the constraints and the elements of the optimization function, which is the English language version of the same thing.